Okay. So we're going to dive in to the workflow. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, unfortunately, I cannot go much over the hour today. I have an, a, another training after you. But if we, uh, we have to drop off somewhere, um, I can always put you on my schedule if you have time for to finish it. Okay, that sounds good. So we're gonna go over the workflow today and I'm gonna start with my accord form. Um, I don't know what types of lines of business if you write everything or if you kind of have a niche, um, I forgot to ask you that. So do you write everything or do you mostly stick to one line of business? Well, uh, as far as business is concerned and commercial, I write everything in that regard. And uh, I write homeowners, but um, if you're talking about the personal lines other than the homeowners, I try to stay away from it. Okay, um, that's good to know. So um, I always like to ask people before I open up my accord form to not focus on the line of business I'm using for my example, but how I'm processing the submission instead. I just say that because regardless of the line of business that you're working on, the workflow and Appulate will be identical. So I'm gonna do a work comp submission, which is pretty basic information. It doesn't require a lot of information, but the workflow you'll see me do today won't change if you've been doing a business auto, a box, um, package, whatever you write, it'll look ex exactly the same. It probably will require more information to be filled out because again, Work comp is pretty minimal information, but the workflow portion will look exactly the same. Hold on, just so one. Up link is, People give me just one quick second. Sir? Okay, uh, I'm, I'm ready. Sorry about that. That's okay. So Uplink is the tool that we're going to start with, and there's two ways to utilize Uplink. This is one of the things that we downloaded yesterday. First, I'm just going to open up my Accord form wherever you keep it. Mine's on my desktop. Yours might be in your agency management system. Yeah. You just open up that completed Accord form, click on your print button, and then you want to make sure that your printer destination reads Appulate Uplink. Once you have your destination as uplink, you'll hit your print button, and then a pop-up will show up asking you to validate your Appulate credentials. That's the first way. The second way is a popular shortcut. Um, you just simply right-click on those accord forms wherever you have them, and then choose uplink from the drop-down menu. And then that same pop-up appears. Um, some people like shortcuts. Some people don't like shortcuts until they have an understanding of the process in the system. So really Uplink is there to utilize however is comfortable for you. Okay. So once your credentials are confirmed, your workstation is going to open Appulate and ask you to confirm the desired line of business that you wanna work on. So if you drop this down, the system gives you recommended uh, lines of insurance and that's just because the system is smart enough to recognize that an Accord 130 most likely applies to these five different lines of business. But if you don't see what you want to work on right here, you have access to all of our lines of business in Appulate. So I'm going to choose Work Comp, and then I'm going to click on Continue. Okay. And then you're taken to this Smart Q&A section. So again, this is where Uplink comes in to play. Um, it takes the information from the accord forms and anything that's duplicate on the accord forms it populates automatically in Appulate. Any questions on how I got here? You okay? Uh, re repeat that last part one time for me please. Uh, on about Uplink? Yes. Okay. So Uplink is what we downloaded yesterday. So that is taking the information that you have filled out on your Accord form, whether it be an Accord 130, an Accord 125, a 140, whatever you're uplinking, um, it'll take all of the information that's duplicate from the Accord forms and populate it into the Appulate system. So you don't have to do the manual work in Appulate if it's already on the Accord form. Okay. 
So before we start the first submission, I just want to review a few things for you. So this tab right here, this is your master insured tab. It was automatically created again off of the information you provided on your accord form. I always like to tell people the more thorough your accord forms are filled out, the less manual work you have to do in Appulate. There's also a contact section in this tab. So Nicole, I listed her as a contact on my accord form. So that's why you see her right here. If you ever need, if you don't put your contact on your accord forms, or maybe you need to add multiple contacts, but your accord forms don't allow for that. So just go to the right hand side and you can click this add new and add as many contacts as you need. Okay. Good. So this big tab right here, this is your submission tab. It's labeled with the line of business that you're working on, the effective date and the current status of your submission. If you ever need to change the effective date, obviously I do because we're past the effective date, you just click on the date. And I personally like the calendar tool. You just click on the calendar and let's just change the date to December 15th and you'll click save. If you do change the date, all currently existing forms and any newly added forms will automatically update with the new effective date. So you won't have to go back and change the date on those original accord forms that you uplink. Appulate will actually do it for you. And I will show you that right now, just in case. So I originally had 11.15 on here. I changed it to 12.15 and my accords were automatically updated for me. So the last thing I like to show people is I personally, I like to add my contact to the main record to begin with in case you ever need to um, send them an email or whatever the case may be. So to do that, you just go to the right hand side and click on this no main contact. And there's Nicole again. So I'm just going to add her to the main record. So now I'm going to review the form section with you. So you see my Accord 130, that's the one I originally uplinked, but you also see the 125. As a premium user, you have access to our available Accord form. So the 125, if you don't uplink that one, will automatically populate for you every time. Um, any information from the Accord 130 will automatically transfer over into that 125 for you as well. If maybe you know you need additional accord forms, click on this available forms right here. And once you click, the list shown will be those that apply or could apply to the line of business that you're working on. So if you know you need your 133 or any of these accord forms you see right here, just check this box and it's automatically added for you. And it's pre-filled also? Yes. Okay. So um, if I will, I'll show you how to edit them as well. Okay, but let me ask you this though. Uh, w once they're pre filled, do, do they go back to your agency management system? Unfortunately, we cannot put it back into agency management system. Um, the only one that we uh, work with right now is next year um, to put information back into the uh, agency management system. We hope in the future we can partner with more AMS systems to do it that way. Um, but right now, it is not possible to do that way. Okay. That's a great question. So now I'm going to talk to you about supplemental forms. And supplementals are added to your submission based off of two factors. The first is the line of business that you're working on. And the second are the markets that you've selected to submit to. So we're going to add our markets by clicking on this little plus sign right here. Yes. And then you'd want to add the markets that you want to submit your risk to. So I'm going to show you the four different ways, hopefully within an hour, that you can submit to with an Appulate. I believe you brought up open brokerage markets yesterday. Is that right? Again. A couple of trainings I, yesterday. Okay. Yes. So when you add your markets, you're going to get this section that is open brokerage markets. So this is based off of the line of business and the location of your insured. So an example I give people, I believe you are in Texas. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So state fund first, for example, is California only. So if you're quoting anywhere outside of California, this won't even show up as an option for you. 
but anybody you see in this open brokerage market, you can submit and get a quote back from anyone you see right here without having an appointment with them. So again, if you ever want to, if you're having a difficult time placing a risk or you want to check out their pricing and product, definitely use this section. If you like this, the quote, it's a smoke and deal, you want to bind it. That's just when you have to reach out to the market to uh, get an appointment with them. Okay. That's neat. Yes, it is very neat. So I'm going to add my four markets. And now that my markets have been added, all supplemental forms that apply to my desired markets and my line of business have been added down here for me. If you um, work with people and you know that there's supplemental forms that you have to fill out, but they're not in Appulate, send me an email, Robert, and I can get them added for you. We just need agents to kind of share those with us, and it's not a problem getting them added for you. Okay. So I just want to show you the supplemental for a second. So Westlake GA, I'm going to open it. You can actually see it's fairly complete based off of the information from my Accord 130 and bridging it over into this supplemental for me. So it saves me some time by not having to fill it out completely manually. Okay. So if you ever wanna edit these forms to the right hand side of these forms are edit buttons. You just choose the one you wanna edit. I'm gonna edit my supplemental for example. So this is the line by line option of section by section. Most agents prefer to see the form itself. So just go up here to this inline option and switch it over. And that takes you to the form to review. Anywhere you see a pencil is where you can edit information. So I'll fill out my limits. And anything you edit, if it is on other documents and it's not filled out, such as my accord forms weren't filled out, if I input it on one document, it is going to bridge over and translate onto other documents as well. Okay. If you see a section in, on Accord Forms right now, I believe it's the 126 and the 140 is not completely editable. Um, we're getting that change. We're working with our engineering team. But if you see a section on there that doesn't have a pencil, go back to this Q&A view. And it's going to be in this section right here to edit. Okay. So you said the 126 and the 140, the general liability and the property is not available to edit like that? There's only, uh, there's only um, certain sections on the 126 and the 140 right now. I'm trying to get that changed. Um, it just came to our attention not too long ago. So we're working with engineering to have the 126 and the 140 completely editable, but I believe it's um, the description of premises um, on one of them and the building information on the 140. Okay. Um, so if you don't see a pencil, just know you can edit it in this view. Okay. I know it's super confusing. I don't know why you can't completely edit the 126 and the 140. Right, but I'm but sure we're working on it. That's going to be resolved pretty soon. Yes, hopefully. We're actually, um, I'm meeting with our engineering team, I believe, Thursday. Okay, great. Okay, so that's editing forms. Um, over to the right hand side by the edit buttons, there's these three little dots. If you click on it, this reveals the option to send via email, via fax sign forms or request signatures from your insured or send a questionnaire to your insured to complete. You also have the option to send multiple forms to your insured to complete by going back into the smart Q&A tab in the upper left-hand corner. And down towards the right-hand side, there's the send Q&A option. So if you click on this, this option allows you to select exactly what you want your insured to answer specifically. So a little background, Robert, I was an account manager for eight years, so I know the pain of trying to get information from your insured. It's a lot of manual labor. This is a great option. So um, instead of compiling an email, so let's say your insured provided some information, but you still need them to fill in the blanks for some other things. This is a great way to save some time. So instead of compiling an email asking, let's say, five questions, 
they answer those questions, send it back to you, and then you manually have to input that information. This is a great way to bypass that. So let's just say, I'm gonna leave all my markets right here. I want them to have all of this information, but I only need them to answer the unanswered questions only. So you change the option, click OK. I just need an email address for my contact. And then you click Save. An email will automatically generate for you. Um, just as a side note, uh, for the first time, you will probably get this uh, to configure your mail server. Highly recommend completing this step. Just click on this configure your mail server. Um, I don't know if you use SMTP or MS Exchange. Um, you what? I use SMTP. Okay, so you'll just need to get your port number um, and input it right here and then input your username and your password for your um, work computer, basically, I tell people, or their email. Um, the reason why you want to not skip this step is because this allows Appulate to send the email out directly as you instead of on behalf of you. A lot of people have told us that on behalf of uh, an agent goes directly into a spam folder, but it also puts a copy of the email in your email server's outbox. Okay. So if you go in here and you configure your mail server, you're having a hard time, just shoot me an email. Okay. So once you click send on this email, the system will send a link to your insured. Your insured will click this mobile friendly link. They can open it up from their phone, iPad, computer, whatever they use. Complete the questions that are presented to them in a clear and clean Q&A view. It's literally yes or no questions. Once they answer the questions, you're, you'll receive an email notification that your insured updated a questionnaire. And when you log back into Appulate, you'll see that all of the data that your insured provided has automatically populated back into the Appulate platform for you. So again, instead of compiling an email, they answer the question, send it back to you, and you manually do it. This is a great way to just send them what you need, they answer it, and then that automatically saves an Appulate for you. Okay, right. Any questions before we start working on the first submission? Well, everything you say is it sounds very good, uh, uh, Jessica. Uh, but I'm glad you are recording this because I hear it. I, I need to know how to go back in and do it again. Absolutely, I completely get that. Um, and we'll go over a couple of things at the end too. Um, I don't expect you to know all of this in one sit down with me. It definitely takes some time to get in there, and maybe a second training. Um, you do have ex access to another training with me. So don't get scared away by all of this information. <laughs> try not to. Okay, so our first market we're gonna look at is Westlake GA. And you see a little clover next to their name and this represents an Appulate style submission. So Appulate style submission markets allow you to complete the entire rate quote and bind process for that market entirely within Appulate. So no emailing back and forth, no portals, it's all in our system. Some companies will have this lightning bolt next to their name, and this represents a live API for that market. This means you have an opportunity to receive an instant bindable quote from that market, as long as the submission doesn't need to be referred back to underwriting. Some of the times it needs to be referred to underwriting because of claims or something that's a carrier's flag in our system. Okay. So using Westlake GA as our example, they're telling us what markets they can approach on our behalf. We also have the power to select and deselect from this submarket list. So essentially we're telling our MGA or broker exactly what markets we want them to approach on our behalf. Um, I'm going to choose Amtrust and Encino for today. If you don't know who you want to go to, feel free to check all of these. Okay. So once your submarket is selected, in the middle of the screen are these colorful letter indicators. These letter indicators can provide you with valuable information specific to your submission. So 
If I hover over this red D, it stands for decline. The market is providing us with the declination reason in this uh, yellow box right here. So on this one, the FBIN is already in the system. We use this FBIN for every training we do. So there's a good chance my training counterpart already has this FBIN in the system. So I just need to move a few numbers around. I'm gonna click on this right here. And because the link is live and dynamic, the system takes the guesswork out of where a question is located and highlights it in a red box for me. So I don't have to go searching through all of these pages, trying to find these tiny FEIN letters. I click on it, it takes me straight to it. Okay. And so I'm just gonna move a few numbers around. Okay, so now that I gave the system an acceptable FEIN, the red D disappeared and it updated to an orange A. Orange A is pending acceptance. So I'm just gonna click on the next link right here and continue to fill out my uh, questions that are required by these markets. Once you answer a question, it gets taken off of this list as well. So you don't have to see it again. Okay. So in this section, I like to show people, there's a couple different ways you can answer these questions. You can of course continue hovering over the A, and clicking on the links, it takes you straight to it, to this red box. I personally, I tend to find myself just staying in this section. If you notice this red six up top, that's yeah. the amount of questions in this section that you have to answer. If it's not highlighted with a red asterisk, you don't have to answer it in order for it to go into um, the submission to the underwriter. So I just answer what is mandatory. If you go through all of these questions and you know that the answer is no to all of them, to the right-hand side, it's a shortcut to mark them all no at one time. I got you. And once you answer a question, this number up here also updates in real time as well. Okay. So I'm just gonna continue going through and answering my questions. Um, any questions while I'm just going through these? No. I know it's a lot of information. Yes. Okay, so last thing, I just need to add my contact. So I'm gonna drop this down. There's Nicole again. She was already filled out as a contact. When you add your contact, it's going to make you assign a role for them. So maybe Nicole is the owner of the business, but maybe she also takes care of billing. If this person has multiple roles in a company or uh, association or, you know, whatever you're working on. There's no cap on how many roles you can assign somebody. Sure. And then last thing is just a phone number. So again, work comp, not a ton of information because it's work comp. It doesn't really require much. So now that I'm answered all of my missing and required questions, I'm going to scroll back up and you can see that all of my letter indicators are now all green. Okay, now green look. is good. Oh, green is good. Go ahead. Green is good. Green is what you want every time you do something because once they're all green, it's going to allow you to click this request quote. Okay. Give it a second to load. I'm in a testing environment, so I'm sorry. It's going to be slower than you'll see on your production side. Just bear with me. I'm sorry. So, Nicole, I mean, Jessica, are we saying that when we submit uh, an application, say, for example, for general liability, uh, the applicant should already have the, um, the supplemental form already loaded? Or if we don't, we, I, I email it to you and then you can load it up and I can, I can work with within the system. Yes, so if you see a supplemental not in there, so again, supplemental supplementals are added um, once you add your markets. So if you add your markets, let's say uh, you work I, you work with somebody a lot and you don't see their supplemental in there, but you fill out a supplemental every time you do a submission, email it to me and I will get it in the queue to be added. Okay. Okay. So you're my contact person. 
I am. I am your dedicated account manager. So if you have any questions, just reach out to me. Okay, that's good. I take care of all of the premium users. Okay. Okay, I'm going to try refreshing my page. Doesn't take that long. Okay, so now I did request quote. It looked at everything. Um, and Sino has to be um, looked at by an underwriter, but Amtrust has this uh, lightning bolt, so it's a live API. It's saying that I can get an instant quote. So I'm gonna click on this get in instant quote. I'm gonna request quote. Let it load again. I don't know why it's taking so long. Sorry, Robert. That's okay. It's usually not this. It doesn't I, lag this much. I have time. I know you, you're short on time, though. Okay, so something's going on with our AmTrust quoting right now. Um, I'll have to reach out to my IT team. But if you um, submit and everything's okay with this, a quote will show up under AmTrust. Um, it's an instant bindable quote because nothing needs to be reviewed. Um, I usually like to show people the quote. Um, if it's an instant quote, just know that the quoting format will be exactly what you're used to seeing. So um, it doesn't change the format regardless of your use of Appulate. It'll be exactly what you're normally used to. Okay. So I'm just gonna upload a quote right here so I can proceed. Okay. So here's my quote. Let's say we wanna bind this quote with Encino. So we're gonna to go to the right-hand side and review, we're gonna hover over this request to bind button and it's gonna tell you what you need to bind this quote. So on this one, I need my, my uh, Accord 130 signed and I need to upload loss run. So I'm gonna start with my Accord form. We're gonna to go to the left-hand side, click on this forms tab right here in line with my Accord 130, all the way to the right-hand side are those three little dots. And I'm gonna cl uh, click on sign. You would assign yourself as the agency representative and then your insured information goes down below. I'm gonna deselect the insured for today though and click okay. It's kind of like uh, DocuSign, but it's just in our system. Once you click OK, the form will then auto populate for you to sign. And if you had an insured, it sends them a mobile friendly link via email. Once your insured clicks the signature link, they'll be taken through this exact same signature process I'm going to show you right now. So to start signing, you'll click on this jumping green arrow, which takes you to the bottom of the accord form to this orange box to click on. You'll type in your name. Choose a fancy font if you want, or just save an insert. And then another jumping green arrow to finalize this. And then anybody who signs has to agree to the terms and conditions of the signature and click on sign. Once yourself as the producer or your insured signs a form, those signatures will auto-populate onto the form for you. 
All signatures obtained are legal and binding in court and an audit trail of all signatures will generate for you. Okay. So if you ever need that signed form or that audit trail, we're just gonna go back into the form section, drop your Accord 130 down and to the right-hand side is your signed document and your audit trail. Okay. Any questions on signed Accord forms? No, that's another neat thing. Yeah, it really is. Um, okay, so that's the required signatures. Now I'll proceed with loss runs. So I'm gonna go to the left-hand side, click on loss runs. So I did show you loss runner yesterday. I added my carrier information manually, but today is a little bit different. I uplinked my Accord forms. And when I did that, I had prior carrier information on my Accord form. So Agora West is in here because they were on my Accord form. Um, if you don't have that on your accords or you need to change something, again, this edit insurance history is available for you as well. Okay. Do you want me to show you Lost Runner again or do you just want me to attach my Lost Run? I'd like for you to show it to me again, please. Okay. So, Lost Runner, once you have your prior carrier information in here, to the right hand side, you'll click Send Lost Runner. Again, the request type will automatically default to letter of authorization. It's the most commonly used request type in the system. It's a letter from the insured directly to the insurance carrier, giving the carrier permission to return loss runs to you as an agent. They do legally have to abide by this letter since it is from the insured, not you as the agent. So starting at the top, Appulate will populate your insured's information followed by the market that you're requesting loss runs from, including this editable destination. Appulate does our best to have the uh, correct fax number and email address for uh, loss runs requests, but they don't tell us when they change it or different locations, whatever the case. So agents do have a little diligence to just make sure that the fax number and email address is right. If you don't see them in here and you have a specific um, destination, you can add them and they'll stay in there for future use. Okay. So on the letter, it's followed by the policy number and the policy period. And then it concludes with the body of the letter itself, which provides the market with the return destination being yourself as the agent. And then finally, your insured's information will be down below. I like to tell people to uh, click on this box to uh, remind yourself, so let's just say in 10 days. Mm -hmm. After your insured signs this form, in 10 days you don't have loss runs back, Appulate will send another signed letter out for you. So I'm gonna click send, and I'm gonna click okay. Once you uh, click okay. I'm sorry, is that automatic? Or what if you do get the loss runs in? Um, uh, do you have to go in and tell the, uh, the application that uh, you received it? Or how, 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 does that, how does that work? If, if you didn't receive it in 10 days or if you do receive it in 10 days, what are we obligated to do? Yeah, so if you get them back within the 10 days, you want to come back in here and upload your loss runs in the system. So. Appulate will track and timestamp all actions related to loss runner with the exception of when loss runs are returned to you by the market. So when you get those loss runs back, probably through email, come back into Appulate and to the right hand side are those three little dots and you'll just upload your loss runs and then it won't do anything in 10 days. It'll stop right here. It, it recognizes it that the uh, process is complete with the loss runs attached. I got you. That's great. Yes. So now that we uploaded loss runs, that was our final binding requirement. So if we wanted to bind this Encino quote to the right hand side, we would just click on request to bind. It gets sent off to the underwriter to bind coverage. With with the loss runs and the sign application attached to it. Yes. Okay, great. So Appulate style submission workflow, a lot of information. Um, 
I know it takes trial and error. Don't worry about it. Um, if you ever get stuck on something, feel free to call me. If I have the time, I'm more than happy to jump on a Zoom call and walk you through it, to be honest. Um, any questions on that workflow portion before I review the next submission style? Uh, no, no. I know that since you're recording, I can go back to that and review it. Okay, perfect. So e-submission style markets, um, that, the icon for that is this globe with the paper scroll in front of it by Arrowhead. There are still partners of Appulate, just like Appulate style submission markets are. The difference is e-submission markets have carrier portals that they still want you to continue using, and that's absolutely fine. Appulate will bridge over duplicate data housed in the Appulate system to that carrier portal for you. So it's gonna be a lot like taking that information from a core form and inputting it into Appulate. It's just going into the portal for you. So for an e-submission, Arrowhead is our example. To so the right-hand side, we're gonna click on this request quote button. The system will then update your submission status to submission initiated, and a new button shows up that says finish submission. We're gonna click on finish submission, and the system will open the carrier portal and populate all duplicate data from the Appulate system to that carrier portal. I didn't click on anything. I, this is where putting in your username and your password for carrier portals comes into play. It just automatically logs you in if it's in there. You wanna make sure that you review your submission and answer any questions that weren't duplicate and appulate. So you'll see some questions that aren't answered in here. And that's because it's either not filled out in appulate or it's not a question that appulate asks. So you'll continue clicking through your screens uh, from one screen to the next and answer any unanswered questions, but you're also allowing Appulate to turbocharge your submission by populating duplicate data in real time. So as you go from one screen to the next, anything that's duplicate, questions that are duplicate from Appulate, it'll automatically fill out for you. On e-submission, you're still going to obtain your quote as you're normally accustomed to, probably downloading on their website after you're done quoting. Sometimes it's through email, um, whichever way it's business as normal once you're outside of the Appulate system. Any questions on getting to the portal? It, it, it seems like it's pretty seamless. Um, yes. But then again, like you said, once I get into the Apple, uh, the actual application I'm doing it, um, it may be a different question, but again i have the i have the recording so i can fall back on that perfect yeah so once you're outside of the appulate system it's business as you normally do in the carrier portal um but once you obtain a quote outside of appulate you want to make sure that you load it back into the appulate system so i'm going to go back into appulate and just pretend i've gone from screen to screen in this portal got my quote Arrowhead is still our example. So we're gonna go all the way to the right-hand side, click these three little dots right here, and we're gonna upload our quote. Robert, do you by chance use IPFS for billing, like your finance agreement? Uh, years ago I used to, I don't use them anymore. Okay, so anytime you upload a quote, this quote markup will show up, so just escape it. Um, so once your quote is in here and you end up binding this quote directly, let's say I bound this directly with Arrowhead on their website, you bring the quote into this portal and then you wanna make sure you go to the right-hand side and mark it as bound. The reason why you wanna do this is because this action ensures that your reports are accurate as well as preparing the system for next year's renewal. Appulate can actually kickstart your renewal process by bringing forward all the information for your insured from the year before and populating it into the new term for you. But to do this, you have to upload the quote and market is bound if you do, in fact, find this quote directly with that market. Okay. 
Any questions on e-submission? Yeah, uh, you know, a lot of us agencies charge agency fees. How is uh -huh. it possible to put an agency fee on either the quote or uh, oh, how, how is, is that is that an option there? So, do you add agencies directly on the quote, or do you kind of like put a little spreadsheet together and give them their final uh, premium? Uh, uh, maybe like a little spreadsheet and give them the final premium. So right now you can't do that, but we um, we are working on doing like quote comparisons and stuff and to um, do a little bit more billing in our system. Right now it's just with IPFS, but um, we are working on more billing solutions in our system. So you will be able to add um, agency fees in our system. Well, what if I what if, what if I would have said I did it the other way? What would you have said then? Uh, if you worked with IPFS? No, no. If you if I if I said that uh, you asked me to do, do a spreadsheet, that was one option, but you told me something else right before that. Oh, some um, there's some carriers that allow you to put the agency fee directly on their quote. So I didn't know if you worked with any markets that do it that way. Yes, I do. Some of them do, some of them don't. Um, so if you do, I that's probably through their portal. So you can, um, once you're in the, the portal, you can, you know, sometimes you can increase your commission or add um, agency fees to in the portal. Okay, that that's a subject I guess I'll touch on at another time then. Yeah, and I, I, I'll double check with my boss. Um, on the agency side of it, on uh, agency fee side of it, sorry. Right, right. It, it's, not a, it's not a real big issue with me, uh, but uh, I, you know, in the event that I do decide that I want to do it, which I have in the past, I, I want to, I want the, 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 the client to see everything and not get confused. Right, I get that, it's very transparent. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, I will ask and I will get you some answers to that. Okay. It sounds like a plan. All right. So the next submission style is Weblink. And Weblink is this more colorful globe you see next to builders. And it's extremely similar to e submission. What makes them different is e submission markets are considered in network and Weblink markets are considered out of network but the actual submission process is going to look extremely similar because they're both bridging duplicate data from Appulate to the carrier portal for you. So for Weblink, again, Builders is our example. We're gonna to go to the right-hand side and click on this request quote. Excuse me, but instead of uh, uh, clicking on finish submission like we did with e-submission, the system will open up the carrier window. I'm not clicking on anything, by the way. And you'll see the system start to run through the motions of auto filling data. It kind of looks like a video, but once it pauses, that's when you can start to fill out any additional data that wasn't duplicate. So you see some blank spaces in here. You need to answer those. Again, that's either because it's not filled out in Appulate or it's not a question that Appulate asks. Okay. You'll continue to auto fill the data as you click on one screen to the next it'll auto fill data in real time. Um, on this one, again, just like e-submission, you'll continue clicking through your screens to obtain your quote from the carrier. After you obtain your quote from the carrier outside of Appulate on this one, as well as e-submission, you want to come back into Appulate, go to the right-hand side, click those three dots, upload your quote, let it load. And then market is bound if you do in fact bind with that market directly. So again, for the same reason, accurate reports as well as um, kickstarting your renewal process. So e-submission and web link, extremely similar. They do look different, but there's really just one big difference in e-submission having that extra step on clicking finish submission really. Any questions on web link? 
No, not not really. Uh, I'm just I'm just listening to everything you say, trying to soak everything in. Yep. Okay. So the last submission style is email submission. And Robert, as an account manager for eight years before coming to Appulate, email submission has one of my absolute favorite features in this section. So the icon is this little envelope right here. To start an email submission, I recommend just adding your underwriter first. So ACE is our example. We're going to go to the right-hand side, and then we're going to stop and click on select. Appulate has a list of underwriters in our system. If you click this arrow, if you don't see them in here, you can add them and they'll save for future use. Okay. Just know that your underwriter will not change regardless of your use of Appulate. So you're going to continue who you working with who you work with now. Say, say it again. I didn't, I didn't understand what you just said. So for email submission, when you add your, you're going to add your underwriter. Um, your underwriter, who you work with right now, is who you're going to continue working with and appulate. There's no difference. Um, it will not change. It'll stay the same. Okay. So once you add your underwriter, you're going to click on this request quote. Again, at the top of this email, just make sure you configure your mail server before sending out any emails. Um, if you run into trouble, email me and I can uh, get you in touch with our IT department. So you're going to fill out your email submission as you normally would. Appulate will attach some documents. If you see something missing right here and you want it, atta want it attached, such as your last run, click on this add existing and you can attach anything that you have in the system from right here just by checking this little box. Okay. So if you're um, within the acceptable time frame of that market, you're just going to click on submit now. Here's my favorite feature. Let's say you're marketing an account. Let's say you're going to three markets, but you're outside of the time frame by like two weeks on one market. Well, in two weeks, Robert, you really don't want to come back and revisit this account. You just want to move on to your next account. So what you can do in Appulate is you can actually schedule an email to be sent at a specific date and time. So we're going to click on schedule submission down here and this will give you your location's current date and time. So click on this little calendar tool right here. I'm going to schedule this in two weeks. So December 14th, I'm going to change the time to insurance magic hour 12.01 a.m. to block the market that morning. And then I'm going to click on schedule and submit. Once you click schedule and submit, the system will schedule that email and the status for that market will be changed to scheduled. You'll see it right here. Okay. Another section I like to show people is this activity section right here. Not only is this a timestamped log of everything you've done so far regarding your submission, you can see that the last activity is the scheduling of my email submission. So. When I get into the office on uh, December 14th, let's say I get in at eight o'clock in the morning, I log into Appulate, I'm gonna see a new line activity in here. That's the sending of my email submission to ACE. So I don't have to go back and revisit this. I can just schedule it and it's sent automatically for me. Okay. That is great. So, Yes, it is. I mean, especially if you market accounts all the time, um, it's honestly it's one of my favorite features. <laughs> There's many of them, but I think as like account managers and people who do tons and tons of submissions, this is just life saving. Yes. So yeah. that's the workflow. I know it's a lot of information and you're probably a little overwhelmed right now. So. I'm going to show you where some resources are for you in Appulate. So if you get stuck, you'll have this video, of course. But there's some great sections in this help tab right here. Yes. Um, I recommend people start with this video tutorial section. These are previously recorded training videos. They're like little short YouTube videos. So if you forget how to do something, um, definitely try this section first. So let's say you forget how to do a certain submission style. We have YouTube videos up here. 
So um, you can have this YouTube video up on one screen and follow along with your Appulate um, system on your other screen. Um, the next one is webinars. If you click on it, this will take you to um, our webinars section. I host premium webinars every Tuesday. So if you ever want to just sit back and listen to the system again, what pretty much everything I've already told you, but you just want a refresher, you want to hear it and see it again, sign up for a webinar with me on Tuesdays. Um, that way you can you just you can just watch the system. Okay. Um, and then if you go in the upper left hand corner and click on the logo down at the bottom right hand corner are these two little bubbles right here. This is a live chat option. So if you can't get a hold of me, um, definitely live chat with our support team. They're fantastic. They're usually very quick on getting back to you. Okay. So that's Appulate. How are you feeling about it? I know it probably takes some time to get your feet wet and get in the system and play around. Well, I'm going to do like I did yesterday. I, 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 I played around with it for not very long, maybe about 20 to 30 minutes. I'm going to do the same thing. Now, I do have a question. Um, it looked like that was like 3,600 um, uh, markets, carriers, and brokers. Yeah. Can you suggest a quick way for me to, uh, can, I, can I type in first letter in or something like that and go through the different ones? Yeah. So you click on available. And then just use this bar right here. So let's say you're looking for Liberty. You search a little bit of Liberty and all of the Liberty, anything that has L-I-B-E in it will show up right here. Okay. Okay, yeah, because that, that, that's an awful lot of them. And I, it's yes. a good thing. I highly recommend searching. <laughs> Yes, 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 I will. It, it'll take a minute, though, Jessica, I can tell you that now. It'll take a minute to get through everything, so uh, that's what I'll do. Now, you put L-I-B-E in there, and you be, what did you hit to to get it to go to that that section with, L, with everything in L-I-B-E in it? Yeah, you just click Enter. Oh, on your, on your, after on your you input. input. Right. Yep, and then anything with those letters will show up right here. Okay. I get it. All right. Well, I mean, that's really it for today. Um, I'll let you play around with it. I'll probably check in with you next week. Um, feel free to sign up for the webinar. It's going to be on Tuesday next week. Um, or if you need some help with the submission, let me know. I'm happy to jump on the phone with you. Okay, uh, and uh, 10 o'clock is Pacific time. So that would be around 12 o'clock uh, Central Standard Time. Um, yeah, so 10 o'clock in the morning would be 12 o'clock Central. Okay, I got you. So, uh, okay, so when I sign up, I, I just wait until 12 o'clock. Yep, it'll, uh, if, when you sign up and register, it doesn't cost anything. It'll usually you get an invite and you can just accept it and it's put on your calendar. Okay, then that's exactly what I will do. Perfect. Well, I hope you have a great rest of your week and um, I will probably talk to you soon. I'll follow up with you soon. Now, um, are we still going to have a uh, another training or we're not going to do that anymore? Um, I can definitely do another training with you. Um, it can be me going over things again, or if you have an insured that comes up you want to work on, I'm happy to guide you through the system. So you can share your screen and I can help guide you through um, the steps on some things. Sound like a plan. Now, uh, uh, do, I, do I need your direct telephone number or do I email you? Um, you can email me. Um, do you have my email address? Have I emailed you? Uh, yes, yes, you've emailed me quite a bit. I believe you are at uh, uh, jbulk uh, equals 
appulate.com at notifybf1.hubspot.com. Is that it? Uh, no, that's not it. So you'll get my email. I got to um, condense after we're done since I'm recording this. I have to condense our video into a YouTube link. So um, I will email that over to you and, and you'll have my direct email and then you'll also have my phone number as well and my signature. That sounds good. And now are you at 818-717-7301 extension 823? I am, yes. Okay. Okay, just, just send me all the contact information that you don't mind me adding. Yes, no problem. I will... Um, Probably, I can probably get it condensed today. Um, if not, it'll be in the morning. I'll send you this uh, link. That sounds good. All right. That sounds perfect. All right. Well, um, if you don't have any more questions for me, I will give you your day back and stop talking. <laughs> I enjoyed your voice and you're, you're very comprehensive. So I appreciate you very much. Thank you so much, Justin. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Have a great day. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.